continuing on with graphing rational equations, we are going to do another example. Um, before we do that, let's go ahead and review the steps of these here. The first four individual steps are key parts to helping us sketch the graph of these rational equations. First, the y-intercept by finding f of 0. Then the x-intercept technically by setting the whole equation equal to zero, but we know we can simplify it by just setting the numerator equal to zero. Finding the domain, really we're focusing on finding the vertical asymptotes, and we do that by figuring out where our function is not defined, and since it's a rational or a fraction, we do that by setting the denominator equal to zero. And finding the in behavior, meaning the horizontal or oblique asymptotes, and we do this by using the face case, looking at the degrees of the numerator compared to the degrees of the denominator. We put all of that information on a graph, and then hopefully that gives us enough information. If not, we can fill in any missing pieces by plotting extra ordered pairs, and then we can always double check by using our graphing calculator. So let's actually see this example here, x squared plus 3x minus 10 over x plus 2. At this point, I encourage you to pause the video and see if you can come up with these four details and the sketch of the graph on your own, and then come back and see how well you did. To find the y-intercept, we let our x value be 0, or we find h of 0. That gives us the constant of the numerator divided by the constant of the denominator, which simplifies in this example to be negative 5. That gives me 0, negative 5. Okay, so let's find our x-intercept. We do that by setting the numerator equal to 0. Um, technically, the whole equation, but we know the denominator cancels out, so I do it by setting my numerator equal to 0. Since this is a degree 2 problem, I am going to solve it by factoring. Quadratic equation would also work. That gives me a plus 5 and a minus 2, to multiply to give me negative 10, but add to give me a positive 3x. Set each of those equal to 0, isolating my variable, gives me x equals negative 5 and x equals 2. But remember, these are intercepts, or ordered pairs. So our final version should be negative 5, 0, and positive 2, 0. Finding the vertical asymptotes, that's where our function is not defined. So since it's a rational equation, it's where the denominator equals 0. So I do it by setting my denominator equal to 0. I isolate my variable, and that gives me x equals negative 2. This is in the format that we want it, because this gives us the equation of a vertical line. Finding the horizontal or oblique asymptotes, we do that by looking at the degrees to give us our face case. In this example, the degree of our numerator is 2, and the degree of our denominator is 1. So our numerator is greater than our denominator. Reviewing what that means, that unfortunately gives us sad face case, and what we need to do is we need to long divide the numerator by the denominator, a lot like long division that you did back in grade school. And whatever answer you get, that's going to be your oblique or your slanted asymptote. So whenever you're in sad face case, you're going to have an oblique asymptote. So I need to long divide my numerator, x squared plus 3x minus 10, by my denominator of x plus 2. So to figure this out, I figure out what times x gives me an x squared, and that is x itself. Now I need to keep things right aligned, so since I have two terms here, I'm going to put it above my second term there. Then I multiply it. x times x gives me x squared, and x times 2 gives me a positive 2. Just like the long division in grade school, we subtract these your x squared should cancel out. So you want these two to be identical, so they cancel out when you subtract them. And 3x minus 2x gives me a 1x. Bring down my next term, and I repeat the process. x times what gives me x? So that happens to be a positive 1. 
I multiply everything here by this 1. So x times 1 gives me x, plus 2 times 1 gives me plus 2. Subtract, so I'm going to distribute my negative to subtract all the way through. My x's cancel out. Again, that's the way we set it up to be. This gives me a remainder of negative 12. Now we have a remainder here, and most always you will have a remainder here. That doesn't matter. What we care about is our quotient, is our answer. We put that in equation format, y equal x plus 1, and that gives us the equation of our oblique asymptote in this case. So I put these four details on my graph, and I see where that leads me. Plotting my details here, I have a y-intercept at negative 5. I have an x-intercept at negative 5 and at positive 2. I have a vertical asymptote at negative 2. And I have an oblique asymptote at y equals x plus 1. Now, most people are confused how to graph this oblique asymptote, but you graph it just like you would a line. You start with your y-intercept at 1, and then you count using your slope, up 1 over 1. So my oblique asymptote is going to look like this, just like it would a regular line, but we draw it as a dotted line. Now we can figure out what the graph of this looks like. So I know that I have two parts to this graph because I had one vertical asymptote, and I know it's got to follow these asymptotes. So on my right, it's got to hit my points and follow my vertical asymptote down here. Hit this point, curve around, and follow my oblique asymptote up there. This one here hits my point, my vertical asymptote there, and curves around and follows my oblique asymptote down here. As always, I encourage you to double check this by plugging it in your graphing calculator. So first thing I need to do is plug in my equation, y equals, put parentheses around the numerator, x squared plus 3x minus 10, divided by my denominator of x plus 2. Graph it in my standard window, and I should see my graph here. That should resemble the graph that we've drawn. Now, something even neater with the graphing calculator is if you ever have an oblique asymptote and you want to double check that, you can actually plot that in at the same time. So I plot my actual equation in y1, and let me plug in my asymptote in y2, so x plus 1. And the neat thing about this one is it's going to graph it in a different color. It's going to graph my oblique asymptote in red. So let's see if we can see this here. So we can see that my graph in blue actually follows my oblique asymptote in red. And if you want to see it more precise, maybe we would even want to zoom out. So let me double it, zoom out to negative 20. Making all these double, so my x's are going to go from negative 20 to 20 with a scale of 2, and my y's are going to go from negative 20 to 20 with a scale of 2. And I should be able to see the emphasis of how my graph actually follows this oblique asymptote. So again, the blue is my graph, and the red is my oblique asymptote. And we can definitely see how it follows it the farther out it goes. And double-checking our final answer, our actual graph is in red, which mimics the graph that we have here in blue. So I believe that we've graphed the right graph to this equation. And that finishes up this video showing you how you can come up with an oblique asymptote. You long divide the numerator by the denominator. Don't worry about the remainder. And whatever you get is the quotient or the answer. That is your oblique asymptote. And you draw it just like it's written as a line.